Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday, March 8th, first day of Daylight Savings Time. I'm so tickled to see all these people because Mark reminded all the kids, Daylight Savings Time. Then he went around last night at 9 o'clock and changed all the clocks and kept trying to tell me I had to believe it was an hour or hour later than it really was so but you know what i'm like until 2 a.m happens mm -mm, i'm not buying it <laughs> so hello everybody and uh i'm always coming on here lately and finishing dressing i mean i don't i just can't seem to remember to get myself together but i have got there we go. Now I look better. Ah, see, he he was smart. He didn't tell you, so you didn't have to get all like wonky about it. <laughs> so anyway, hello, hello, Kim and Susan, Sonia, sweetie people, sweetie sweetie peoples, Maureen Collis, Joey, Jody, I mean. Jody, I want you to tell us, can you figure out how to type an, an, a pronunciation of your town? So, yeah, it's supposed to be in the 60s this week, so I'm very excited. Um, if you see me doing this a lot in videos, it's because I wear headbands. But I got this big old bowling ball head, and the headband's always slipping back, slipping back, and I can feel it. It irritates me, so I have to pull it forward. If I get them loose enough, they don't try to slip around my head, then they don't do a lot of good. So what can I do? But I do have a big head, and uh, it's hard to deal with sometimes. <laughs> I hate anything pulled over my head. I remember as a child having someone try to pull a shirt over your head and I would panic. Well, I have claustrophobia. Maybe that's why. <laughs> but I don't like, I always, if you notice almost all the time I have button up shirts because I don't want something pulled over my head. But anyway, now aren't you glad you spent your Sunday to find that out? <laughs> So let's see who all is here. Oh, and let's see if Jody can figure out how to give us a pronunciation of her town's name. So Martha Mendez Villan Villanueva, I think I said it right. Welcome. Welcome. Linda's back. Oh, okay, show. Oh, that's sweet. She checked in from the grocery store. I, I, I told you I, we got an inexpensive, older smartphone. I have no clue how to do that stuff on it. No clue. So let's see. I'm going to pull this down so I'm not looking back and forth quite so much because I'm looking at my laptop computer here, and then I make sure to look at the camera because I was telling Mark, what this feels like for me is – the electronic way to have you all over f it to my studio so we can sew together and chat and talk about all kinds of stuff. So, hello, is it Christy Harriman? Hi, or Ch Ch Chisty? You know what? You're going to have to help us, darling. So, <laughs> but it's so good to see all of you. Okay, who else? It is so good to see all these names. Ah, oh, Linda, you're a Canadian. Or I guess I assume Mark was born in Ontario. So Canadians are very special to us. So let's see. Let me hi Bonnie. I'm so glad you could come. Bonnie is a busy lady. Do we have someone from Norway? Oh, that's wonderful. Hello, Saeed, Vedas, Vedas, Nina Fay. <laughs> Hi. Um, anyway, 
That is wonderful. You're way up there at the top of the world. In fact, uh, we have our Nadine from Germany. So that's a little closer than we are to you. But, uh, oh, it's so good to see all of you. Vicki Lemire is here. I hope you're feeling better, hon. So let's see. Yeah, and I didn't realize until after last week's um, show that evidently we had a, um, a a rude person come in and try to, you know, spook us, spunk us, whatever, funk us. Anyway, anyway, to make a long story short, we troll us. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. Evidently, three of y'all at least zoomed in and took care of that troll so all right you're making stroganoff oh i had that last week it was so good today just while we're talking about dinners today i pulled out a bag of turkey that i had saved from the christmas turkey and i had made this huge pot of turkey gravy because no better i mean oh turkey gravy made from the turkey pan the turkey itself is so good and so i had packed extras and then I pulled out some chicken broth I had packed away. Lately, I don't know what it is, but I've been cooking and freezing. So we've got all kinds of meals. So let's see. Oh, hello, Sherry Mercurio. That's a new name. We're tickled to have you here. I'm loving all of these new names. I heard from the YouTube and it said I had 115 or 100, something like that, new um, subscribers. So I was thrilled. And then it told me to remind you, oh, Bonnie's making spaghetti. Yay. And, um, and then it told me to remind y'all to subscribe and hit, and click on the bell because then you'll be notified when something new's coming up. And um, then it's, you know, just get everybody to hit like. But, you know, Susan does such a good job. But then the one thing I thought about, if people don't read, if people don't read the live chat script, then they wouldn't know. So I've said it now. I, I'm not good at that stuff. I, I don't like begging y'all to, subscribe and and all that i just hope you'll come back because i love all these new people so thank you everyone also we had two new people i've sent invitations to i hope debbie got her emails i was having some kind of problem i invited her three times so but we do have a, that new cheryl she was accepted in. So if you send me an email, no, I'll get right on it and I'll keep trying until we get you in. But most of the time it works really well. Just double check your emails. Sometimes people have a mistake in their email name, but they don't pay attention to it because it's like you enter it once and it automatically pops up. It's the one that automatically pops up. So just double check because I don't want you to feel like you can't get back in so hello tiffany so uh <laughs> so now what uh maureen has an italian wife tony uh so um i'll tell you a little start out telling you a little bit about my weekend do you notice that big pile of mess over there? All of a sudden, not, well, my realization kind of hit me. When I finished Thursday's live stream, I said, this place is a mess. And when Michelle, oh, Michelle Lang, it, she's going to have spaghetti too. Yummy, yum. Uh, Michelle will tell you, this basement room can get really dusty if I don't really keep it clean. And because sometimes she'd come over to sew, and we'd be sneezing and blowing our noses. Well, I've been doing that. I've been getting very stuffy down here. And I spend so much time down here now. So I looked around and every surface was covered. And I don't know about you ladies, but in my so I try to keep the rest of the house pretty straight, 
but I tend to have piles everywhere, piles of this that I'm interested in, but I don't have time, piles of that I want to read, but I don't, I don't have time. Well, down here, every surface was covered, and I mean deep. And you know, when Tanya came here in January, you know she talked about my countertop. I said, Tanya, tell them how bad my countertop is. So I decided Friday night before I went to bed, tomorrow was the big day, the big, dirty studio showdown. So I got myself prepared. I woke up, fed Kiwi and Finny, my little birds, and cleaned up the kitchen real quick, grabbed a big mug of, you know, my big ice water, and I came down here. I stayed down here till 8 o'clock last night. I came down here this morning as soon as I fed the birds and, and cleaned up the kitchen there. Came down and I've worked until now. And I would say I'm only a little bit over halfway. So, a new flamingo. And do you notice I got a bumper sticker that I put up? It's a little out of date. I'm hoping there'll be a Biden name above it, and that'll be the team that runs. But that's just my opinion, and everybody's entitled to their own opinion. But I got the, I got the bumper sticker in two days, three days before she stepped out of the race. So I said, I'm still putting it up. <laughs> it is Woman's Day. Never a speck of dust, Michelle. You're so cute. Um, it is International Woman's Day, and I said, that's my international woman right there. Love that woman. So, anyway, um, and as Joy Reid said, when women decide they've had enough waiting, all of that, they're going to make sure a woman's voted into office. So, women, we got to do it. <laughs> So anyway, oh my gosh, Mark has just stepped in. Aw, aw, thank you, Mark. Oh my goodness, I think I need to make him a chocolate cake. <laughs> that is so sweet. Now you see why I love him. He can make me so angry sometimes, <laughs> but I love him. That is a very sweet thing he came in and did. He knows that I have been grieving this week. Oh, my gosh. It's just like, you know, we had such good choices. Could one of them have made it? But um, but we'll keep working at it. And that's, I'm going to get off my political soapbox now because I don't want to, I don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> so, anyway, but I've been cleaning. And let me show. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, no, I, I saw a brief email that she had done the opening for SNL, and I thought, I've got to see that. Yes, congratulations to all women everywhere, because we have proven now we can bring home the bacon, we can cook it, we can nurse the babies and take care of ourselves and our husbands and the home and all of it and still be amazing. <laughs> so yay, women, yay. And uh, we are women, hear us roar. So we will never be quiet again. Because I told Mark, I said, do you know the women got the right to vote in 1929? And now it's almost 100 years later. Hello. So we'll, we'll get busy. We'll get busy. All right, I want to show you something, so let me pull this out of the way, because do you, I don't know if you can see that counter good. Let me see very carefully, because I pulled the screw out of the camera this morning. Do you see all of that fabric? Whoops, hold on one second. I'm being careful. Mark will be sitting upstairs going, oh, my goodness. But there is, there's about five bins of carefully folded fabric. And I went through the room. 
I went through the room and looked for fabric everywhere. And it's funny how fabric has a way of expanding out into the ozone. <laughs> and what I mean by that, oh, bye, bye, sweetheart. Thank you for everything. Uh, he's a sweetie. And um, he's been busy today. It was nice because, you know, he had the flu and uh, it took him weeks to get better. But we're, we're, we're getting there. Um, but anyway, I, the fabric tends to walk away or hide um, or maybe it's multiplying. You know, I don't remember buying all of this. <laughs> but uh, what happened to Diana? Oh, sweetie, I'm so sorry. Diana Wright's 20-year-old kitty cat is dying. Honey, I'm sorry. I wish we could give you a hug. That's, that is rough. That is rough. I mean, having a cat for that long. And let me tell you something. I don't know what I would do without my pets. My one grommet dog, he's my heart dog. And he goes everywhere with me. And, in fact, every show he's under this desk. And he loves coming down here with me so he can just lay nearby. And so, honey, I'm so, so sorry. You know what? That was really good of you, Susan. You're right. She has had a lot of loss. Her father-in-law passed. And I'm sorry, sweetheart. Gosh, you know, we have several members that have had serious loss in the last year. It seems like as we age, it just becomes more and more common. So to all of you who have lost someone, we give you a big, soft, gentle hug. We love you. Feel free to come here and tell us. Share your grief. You have to be able to share it or else it can do such damage if you hold it in. So we are all here for you. And um, sometimes we just need a soft place to fall. I want this to be your soft place to fall. So, yeah, I'm very sorry about all of that. Um, your grandmother was 33 before she could vote, Michelle. Yeah. I mean, we forget how, how hard we have had to work. And um, Mark was telling me, he said, yeah, I heard somebody talk about it. He said, it makes you think. But he said slaves were getting the, given the right to vote before uh, women. And it's like, yeah, we're the, the last group saying, hey, it's our turn. And we sure know we couldn't do any worse. Oh, okay. I'm off that subject. I am off that subject. Michelle and I, we could, we could tell you some things, boy. We, we, we were righteous women. <laughs> so, hello, Kathy Mitchell. So, Kathy Mitchell, that's the one I got in our group. So, rem if you're here. Patricia Fry, if you, oh, that's right, Patricia's in Maryland visiting grandkids, wonderful, Patricia, in a couple weeks, I'll be in Maryland visiting my grandson, so, um, but, oh, no, Diana, your dad's brother died two weeks ago, you know, there, there are times it seems to happen like that. It really does seem to happen. Like, honey, I'm so sorry. We are all very, very sorry. I'm going to show you pictures in a little while of Diana's um, quilts that she's been working on. And she found, it, she found out that, that uh, a veteran is facing some tough situations with his health. And she got him a quilt made and given to him in no time. So we'll have a chance. You'll have a chance to see what a big heart Diana Wright has and what a huge talent she has. So, oh, hello, grandkids. Hello. There. Oh, wonderful. Hello, Akko. Boy, we've missed our Akko. She's such a lovely, lovely lady. What a lovely lady. We're so glad to see you here. So, 
I have been, <clears throat> I made, I'm making a video. I'm editing my Jenny Byer video. I hope to have that ready for you in just a couple of days. And then I started a new video on what to do when you're crafting space, your studio space, your sewing room has become a monster. Because unless you are very, very different, most of us reach a point where the room is so messy, we can't deal with it. We can't, we don't even want to be in that space. And messiness, disorder, um, junk everywhere, whatever you want to call it, can drain your creativity. It really will drain your creativity. You come down, you can't find a clear space to work. You come down to work and you can't find this, that, the other. You spend more time trying to look for stuff than you do actually creating. So what I do, I was taught by my counselor, is how do you handle cleaning up a space that truly overwhelms you? Just coming down here, when I looked and every single space is junky and overwhelmed and bags of stuff everywhere, where do you start? And most of us just see something and want to do that and do that and, you know, go, go here, there, everywhere. We see something and we want to um, just put that away. But then you got to put that away and something's piled up on top of that and you can't reach that. And how do you start? And that's what exactly, Diane57, good job. And... Um, so I find that I thought I was putting stuff in a, in a place where it was reasonable, but it tends to add up and then it tends to shift and get knocked aside. And I had my floor space was starting to get all clogged up with bags and stuff. But mainly what I found in starting this cleaning was I forget that when you have made the quilt top, Take the fabrics for that project out of the bag and decide what to do with them. And, and I'm even going to tell you a couple of things that you're not going to like to hear, but I, it's something that I have decided I need to do. All right. Well, I'll give you a few hints and hopefully you'll still watch my video. But I know that you have to pick one thing to start with. Most of us have an inertia and a procrastination. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Or, I can't deal with it today. I'll do it tomorrow. Well, we can keep doing that until it's months later. That's not a good thing. So I have learned you start with a plan, make a plan, and it doesn't have to be elaborate. But my plan was I was going to clean off this counter. Now, when I say clean it off, I just mean carry everything on that counter and put it on my tables over there. And that's why those tables are a wreck. But that's okay. I needed one clear surface that I could handle. And just seeing that surface cleaned off made me instantly feel better. It didn't make me feel like, oh, my God. And I decided that the first thing I needed to do was gather up all the bits and bobs and pieces and bolts of fabric. Because everywhere I looked, there was fabric. Fabric from doing the flamingo quilt. Fabric from doing Christmas activities. Um, fabric from doing the Jenny Byer quilts of the last three years. Um, all kinds of fabrics. And so I said, what I'm, and that gave me a focus. I could just put my blinders on and only look at fabric and I could handle the mess better. So when I started out, this was this thick. It was a hundred sheets of the comic boards. And I've told you about these. They are a 
um, a white coated cardboard. And these are, let me tell you the size. They are about seven by 10 and a half, okay? I get them from connecting threads because they're cheaper there, but wherever you can get them the cheapest is fine. The reason I like these is because they're acid free. And so you know that by storing your fabric, even for years, it's not going to damage them. Then I didn't know what to, to use to keep it on here. And I went around and around about everything. But now what I do is I use jumbo paper clips. Make sure they're smooth and have no rust on them. And I paper clip the fabric where the last fold happens. But I this was this thick when I started out. And now I have, what, three or four left. And what I do is anything above a quarter yard. I try to put on those because it's so easy. They take up such little space and you can just flip through and look at your fabric. And then I have these inexpensive little miniature laundry tub baskets that I get from the Dollar Tree. And then I can, and the, the comic boards fit perfectly, stand them up in nice and neat. But what I did also is I took the time to press the fabric to put them on there because if you press it nice and flat, number one, when you're ready to sew, it's ready to use. Number two, it takes less space. So, you, you know, you can really fit them in there snugly in the baskets. So, um, but what I found, I was surprised, is how much fabric was in little bags totes, old garbage, little little like grocery store bags, all of that kind of stuff. And I found that um, I hadn't been taking the fabric out of projects I had completed. That was a lot of fabric in those projects. So, but also I found a few things to show you. And I probably have a lot more that I'll end up showing you. But I found some blocks. I don't remember making these. But looking at it, I know I did make them. And I this must have been made in response to 9-11. Because it's a whole bunch of patriotic blocks. So this is almost 20 years old. And it's eight blocks. And you know what? I'm going to put them into something. I've done the hard work. I mean, some of these blocks were complicated. I was kind of surprised I did such a good job. Let me show you some of them. You ready for this? Look at that. Now, luckily, I found this was paper pieced. You can barely see little scraps of paper in the seams. Let me see. Well, I saw them. Oh, there they are. Little scraps of paper. But... I was surprised at some of these. I had really, for me, I think it was a pretty good job. This, maybe not the best choice of fabrics, but look at all those. I mean, this was a lot of assembling. So, I think it deserves to be put in a setting. The funniest thing, I found projects going back so far, the fabric was awful. I mean, you might as well have taken and colored on cardboard and sewn something with it. We're so, so lucky. Oh, Kim, do you have to run? Bye, sweetie. It was good seeing you this week. Have a lovely afternoon. I hope everybody else is enjoying um, some of this beautiful weather, but you're hand sewing a four patch. All right. Your yeah, hand sewing is wonderful. Jenny Beyer has a wonderful video on hand sewing. So this is another funny thing. Back in the 90s, I worked at a historic museum making costumes for the living history, um, the living history workers. And so I say costumes. It was clothing because they had to um, till fields, clean houses, um, cook over an open fire. 
all of that. But in the summer, I hated leaving my children, even though they were older by this time. Um, so my son might have been nine or ten. And so every summer I would go to a craft store or whatever and find the summer project that I wanted them to work on. Something a little enriching. So I found this bag, a grocery store bag tied up with this in it. This must have been the one that I left the fabric for my son. He did not. I don't know how much sewing he actually did, but I know that he didn't make this by himself. I must have helped him. But um, what I did is I wanted them to just start with squares and see where they went. So this would have been what I bought my oldest daughter, Becky, to do. Whoops. So here is one half of it. And this was not their favorite project, okay? So Becky probably was 15, 16 working on this. And the seams were pressed open. I thought that was interesting. I, I guess I would have told them to press the seams open, but that shows you I hadn't been quilting that long, and I was mostly self-taught. Now, this would have been the fabric I chose for my middle daughter, my second daughter, Katie, who's the middle child. So there's some that's, okay, gr pretty good job. And then but she did not want to do this. She had no interest. So, and this shows, <laughs> it's like, I'm not going to take this seriously. I don't want to work on this. So anyway, I thought this was precious. So, and calicos, I mean, you can tell this fabric is from the first half of the 1990s. So anyway, I thought the next time we all get together, I'm going to pull these out. <laughs> and if they have any, you know, if they want it, fine. If not, I'll probably go ahead and toss them. Because I really don't remember how much of any of the actual work they did. And uh, because other years, one year I got them polymer clay. Well, they had fun with that. But I just wanted to kind of, I didn't want them sitting home just watching TV. I wanted them to do something interesting try a new craft or skill and uh you know they of course you know they didn't take the time that i was hoping they would take but it was cute i you try as a mom you try so anyway oh no that's a good idea susan and that leads me to this this that i wanted to tell you over on that counter i have what would amount to two trash bags full of scraps. As quilters, we hate to waste anything. As women, we hate to waste anything. I went through a phase where when people cut, like made a snowball block and they cut off the back two layers of the uh, triangles, you know, save them for me. Now, what, am I, what did I really think I was going to do with them? And think about this. Think about this. I've got bags of scraps. And they're weighing me down. I don't have any place for them. I barely, I don't know where I'm going to end up putting all this fabric. Um, I don't have enough shelf space. And I don't even have the stash that so many people have. But I don't have storage space built for it. And, you know, I've got in my laundry room, I've got cabinets, but I love crafting. I've got basket weaving. I've got um, mosaic making, pasanki, you know, the egg co drawing coloring, um, polymer clay. I love everything. I've got painting supplies because I used to be a painter. And so I just have run out of room. And I'm... All right. Thank you. And uh, people are making crumb quilts and string quilts and all of that. I don't have the time to make the Jenny Buyer kits that I paid good money for. 
I don't have time to finish the quilts for my two of my children's weddings. I need to free up my emotional space, my mental space, and get rid of a lot of, pardon my French, crap. And it is not a sin to throw away fabric scraps. And you know what? I have heard of so many different people saying, save them to make dog beds and save them for this. We're really good at saving this stuff, but sometimes we have to say, whoa, I'm not saving anything more. I was even thinking, I need to get rid of some of the books and magazines I've got that I know I'm really never going to do anything with. So when you have to work hard to clean out your stuff, and you're trying desperately to find room to have it easily accessible and pleasant to look at. Because if you enjoy time in your room, you're more likely to come down more often. If it feels more like play and less like another job that you need to handle, you won't come down here. So I am going to throw away my scraps. And, you know, my first thought Oh, somebody might want them. It's not worth the postage to mail them. And it's expensive postage. And I told myself, Deb, look at all of this gorgeous fabric waiting for you to use it. You don't need to bog yourself down with scraps. You've got new, exciting fabric that's waiting for you. So that's what I'm going to do. The only way I would send any scraps to anybody is if they could... Um, pay this postage and you know I don't think it's worth it so I know isn't it funny how we get kind of panicky but you know what it's okay it is okay to do that it is okay it is okay to throw books away if you can't find somebody who wants them you don't know how to sell them or you don't you're not able to sell them it's okay. We have become a country that gets storage units of stuff that we don't even go through for years. We have to learn to say, that's it. I'm not letting myself be burdened with stuff that honestly, I'm not going to use. So I thought that I would shock you. <laughs> <laughs> but I've come to the point where I thought, should I go through it and pull out good scraps versus bad scraps? But the truth is, I've gone through back into those scrap bags looking for fabric maybe three times in 30 years. Really? Three times in 30 years? Is that worth the weight on your shoulders of keeping all of that? And you know what? This year, now something like these little quilts, if my kids don't want them, I'll send them to Miss Susan. Because that, that's something substantial. And if there are quilts that I'm not going to finish, in fact, I'm going to do a little thing for you today. And if you don't want it, don't take it. Don't be burdened by my stuff. But this is the first little Degas. Um, ballerina painting that I did on muslin and I, it's sitting here and I hate to throw it away and I said but Deb you don't need it you already have the other one so if anyone wants this I will put it in an envelope with a 40 whatever cent stamp and I'll mail it to you so just let me know if you want it's already got stickums on the back but if you want this little Degas painting I did I We'll mail it to you. So just let me know and I'll mail it to you. If not, it's no big deal to toss it. I can make another one. So send it to who? <laughs> so anyway, but that's my new thing. I have, I have, yeah, and I have scraps that I do for that. But you know what? Hi, Sherry. I have to, um, oh, yay, Deborah Donnell, long arms. 
Okay, Susan, I'll send it to you because you know what, Susan, I already have a package ready to come to you from Miss Diana Wright for Miss Nikki, but I will do that. And, um, and I'll ask my girls, since I'm going to mail something, I'll ask my kids if they have any interest in those quilts, and I'm sure they don't, and I'll send those too. So, anyway, um, but re look at your space and start to decide, is it making your life happier or is it a drag? So, and Deborah Dunnell, I'm thrilled for you. Okay. So now we talked about that, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you some, um, uh, and, uh, oh, what a great idea. And so I'm going to, this is, you remember I was working on this quilt? So I'm going to show you a couple things, and then I'll put this up on the thing. So what, what kind of long arms are you looking at, Deborah? I tell you what, being able to, let me turn this light back off, I think, yeah. Being able to finish your projects is huge. It's important because otherwise you aren't fully enjoying all that work and effort you're spending. So that is fantastic. All right, well, I have this beautiful... Beautiful, beautiful Miss Cheryl Lemons quilt, Miss Nadine's beautiful quilt. And as I turn this around, all right. Now, this is still a work in progress. I haven't done anything more on it since Thursday night, but I will have things done on it before next Thursday. I was telling y'all. If, yeah, if you, if they know, yeah, yeah, especially the books, you know, I would like to get them a home. So, and you know what I found? It's, now this is another thing to think about when you think about your scraps. If you can find a way to pass them on to a good cause, that's fantastic. But I found when I, looking back at some of these old fabrics that we used to have in the 90s, I don't like them. <laughs> so why give them space? Give them over to somebody else who can use them or throw them away. <laughs> so I was telling everybody Thursday that I had signs. I was a staunch traditional quilter. I didn't even like the idea of art quilts. When I thought of art quilts, I thought of paintings by Jackson Pollock. That wasn't my idea of, you know, of something pretty. But every once in a while earlier in my career, I think I'm going to turn back this light on. I can't decide what shows up things around here. Huh, I don't know. Okay. So I do a truck show where I take quilts I've made and I show the trajectory of my quilting career where I started out being such a staunch traditionalist and now I'm an art quilter which to me are two very divergent forms of quilting and this is an early quilt I made based on when I first moved here to North Carolina I was in this nighttime guild and they had a challenge and it was do something that has something to do with your gardens so I decided that I, and at the time, I was a staunch gardener. I had sun, and I had plenty of sunshine. Now it's just shade where I live. But anyway, this was my, this was my garden. And I was going to show them, like, here's my sunflowers, and the leaves, some of the leaves and flowers aren't doing so good. Oh, well, actually, with that one, that's better. They were doing better. But let me pull this forward so I can see what I'm showing you. But here was my broccoli. And there's a worm, a cabbage looper on it, just eating away. And then, um, and see how I already loved doing little broderie purse, cutting out, doing little applique, cutting out things and appliquing them on. See, there's a little shovel in the dirt. But then here, I showed my tomato plants getting some of the wilt and losing some 
fruit and uh, leaves. And then here was supposed to be my corn. And it showed that the earworm, corn earworm thing going to town. And then here was my strawberry patch and the chipmunks eating my strawberries. And see how I cut out the little things. And then here was a little snail just munching away at my little baby spinaches. And so um, I, I, all that way back then, this would have been probably 2007, 2008. But back then, I already liked using opinion and humor in quilting. And I, I should have realized I had such fun making this. But somehow I didn't realize that this really had worth too. So now I'm going to show you one more quilt. Let me grab this. This quilt was showing some little signs of wanting to be an art quilter. And, yeah, Michelle remembers these. And, um, oh, my gosh, her, she has a blue and brown or blue and tan quilt that's exquisite. I've always lusted after her blue and tan quilt very much. But, anyway, so... See this? It was back during the craze of all of the peacocks. And what this was, again, this was Brodery Purse. Taking, and this, this is a time-honored form of quilting. Chances were very expensive fabrics. They were like a polished cotton and they had floral designs or animals and they would have been very very expensive so to save money back in the colonial times all the way up till now you would buy a high quality muslin that would be your quilt and then you would take that beautiful chintz fabric and cut patterns out of it and put it around the other quilt and that way you only had to buy one yard of the expensive fabric and five yards of the less expensive fabric. So this is kind of an homage to that. And let me show you my peacock. And so anyway, what I wanted to do is to do an Asian feel fans with the peacocks and the flowers going down and across the fans. And what I find interesting about this, this fabric, when I first bought these, it's a yellow and a green. When I first bought them, they were extremely bright. I could not find a pale color for the fans. So you know what I did? I bleached them. Yep, I soaked them in bleach and bleached them until they were very nice and light colored. And then wash them, wash them, wash them really good to get to stop the bleach. And there are ways you can you can do research on of how to stop the bleach because you can't just rinse it out. It will still have some effect. But anyway, so I just wanted to show you these were two signs that I was really heading into being an art quilter. All right. All righty. And so I did that one probably back in 2008 as well. Um, yeah, don't, yeah. And that, you know, that brings up a good point. You can bleach your fabric and then find how to make that, that bleaching action stop. And, um, but you can also use the back of the fabric. Remember for the peacock, I mean, the flamingo quilt right here, for the flooring, uh, I turned it to the back of the fabric because it was the color I wanted and it wasn't as bright and bold. So, you know, I mean, I, I, out of the box, exactly. It might be the vinegar 
and you know, um, chlorine evaporates too. So if washing it, washing it, it might be the vinegar. You, I just don't want to ruin your fabric, so I want you to check, double check. But with mine, I just washed it with soap and stuff several times, several times, several times, rinse, rinse, rinse. And it has been fine. And it is, what, 12 years old and nothing has happened to the fabric. But I wanted it to have a pale, washed silk look. And it did. It worked. But I do love thinking out of the box. I, you know, like when I did the bills on the flamingos, taking white, plain white fabric and putting Mod Podge fabric on it then paint, acrylic paints, and then mod podging it again, and it gave it a unique feel. So, and that's that shows that my heart is an art quilting. So, but I just thought, Thursday, if you come back to our Thursday art quilting um, night, Thursday night at 7.30, I'm going to show you some more of my early works that, that, kind of showed yep yep she was going to be an uh, more of a quilt artist so you never <laughs> i don't you know what i would hate to fit in a box i would absolutely hate it because a box is where somebody else has already gone and done and i don't want to just copy and i'm not saying anything's wrong with copying you know, I mean, when I make my Jenny Buyer, I start with a kit. So there are times for that. But I also have to have time where I just fly on my own. And sometimes I fly a little too close to the sun. Sometimes it's all good. Speaking of flying too close to the sun, I went to see a movie a couple weeks ago. I get up to the refreshment bar to order my popcorn. The young man's name is Icarus. I stood there, I stood there, he was getting my popcorn, he was getting my drink, I couldn't stand it another minute, I said, "Hun, I hope you didn't fly too close to the sun, and uh, <laughs> I felt terrible, because I thought, how many people have said that to him, because if you remember, Icarus is that, is it Greek mythology, and it was the man that made the feathered flying wings for his son, but his son flew too close to the sun. The feathers melted off of the wax that he was holding them on, melted off. And no, he did. He did know. He was the cutest. Oh, my God, what a cutie pie young man. He said, no, nah, that's okay. I said, okay. I said, I tried so hard not saying it, not saying it, because I thought, oh, you've probably heard it so many times. <laughs> But I said, what a cool name. And I said, as one of a zillion Debbies from the 1950s, I can tell you, what a cool name. You are distinctive. So anyway, all right. Well, let me tell you a little bit about this quilt. Because this has been a journey. And, you know, I love kind of saying, hey, if you do this, then you might have to do this. I love telling you where I've been and where I'm going on projects. Well, when I got this beautiful fabric from a gift certificate from a very dear, dear lady, I knew when I saw the stripe in this grouping, I knew I wanted to make another mandala. I love this stripe. And you know, it was done with a 10 degree wedge ruler. And I made 36 of the exact same cuts of the fabric and, um, and then put it on the pink background. Then I took and cut out some flowers, put them on. Let me make sure I've got this upright. I think I have it upside down. What I did to make sure I had it upright, I'll show you, is... I, on this triangle, I sewed, I just sewed a line, whoops, sewed a line right down it. That tells me that's the top. So that way I don't have to keep, keep looking at it and going, huh? <laughs> so, and you know, it's going to be on point. So here, here it is. Wow. So I found this great pattern. And it was a medallion quilt, and it had the medallion on point. Super 
easy, right? No. This quilt is made for a 16 and a half inch finished. Oh, to get that ruler, you can get them. Um, Amazon, I know, has them. I put it in. I, I tell you what I'll do. I will put it below this. Because I have it in the other video. So I just have, I mean, the other live stream from two weeks ago or so. And uh, I'll, put, I'll put it in this, but it'll be after today's live stream. So, um, and it's just any 10 degree wedge ruler will do. But anyway, the center medallion, including that little dark border, edge bordering it on here is 16 and a half inches. Well, my original center block, meaning the pink fabric and the wreath shape, was 24 inches. So I, hi, Teresa Jukovic. So I, Amazon and Creative Grids, thank you, Susan. You're so good. So I, um, I cut the 24-inch square down. The most I could. I was not willing to give up this narrow pink border around my mandala. Then, oops, that made it like 18 inches. Well, I'm still short, and I really wanted to have this green border stripe around it. So that brought it back to 22 inches. So I, all together, I think, I, I think it was like, like, yeah. So then I had, okay, luckily I hadn't cut out everything yet. I first did the mandala and then I hadn't cut out everything because these blocks were supposed to remain at nine and a half inches. That's how they were supposed to make. I had made the strip sets that you use to cut them up. And just to tell you real quickly, this is a free pattern. You can find it. It was created by Debbie Beave or Beavis but for connecting threads. And this pattern is called Art Nouveau Medallion Quilt. And copyright connecting threads. So I think if you were to go to connecting threads, you could find it, this free pattern. Because it's a free pattern. So I, luckily, I had made my strip sets, but I hadn't cut them out. So I knew there was going to be a problem because... Let me show you the breakdown of this puppy. Knew there was going to be a problem because you had to have these blocks have to be able to fit around the medallion in the center. So I said, hmm. <laughs> I said, hmm. So I said, okay, what I have to do is take that nine and a half inch block and bump it up to 11, to 11 and a half inch, around 11 inches. So what I did, and this is where at first I had already cut out my solid blocks, so I couldn't change that. They were already nine and a half inches. When I say solid, I mean the this print here. It's fun that you can look at a problem in a quilt and turn it into a design opportunity and I did and I want to see if you like it as much as I do I got back out my striped scraps that I had left over from doing the mandala center the mandala and I put the stripes around this and mitered the border to give it like a picture frame effect and I said I like it better then, so I bordered them and built them up. Then I had to do the same with this. Now, I was worried because this creates a secondary pattern. See the secondary pattern, the dark 
center blocks are. So, but I said, well, I've got to do it or they're not going to be big enough. So there I bordered these and I used scraps. Remember I cut out that circle, the inside circle behind the mandala. I said, I don't want to waste that beautiful fabric. So I cut it out. I even used that and tried to cut it into strips to, because you know what? I kind of like the, oh, I see buffering. I kind of like the, our grandmother's make do attitudes. And I thought I'm not going to waste this stuff. So I cut in some of my strips. I've tried to, you can see how they're a little bit uneven, but I've tried to square them up best I can. So now let me put this up on the wall and that way you can see what I did, but it's going to work now. Luckily, I had cut the little, see the on the blue fabric, those triangles? I didn't cut them all the way small. I just, it says make these big squares and cut them twice, both ways diagonally. I only cut them one way because that way then, you know, I can. So I think I can make this work. And I love, I love coming up with a challenge. How can I make this work? Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. So when I made those strip sets, when it came time to cut them out, I cut them out a little bit bigger. And that gave me some heft for the block so that I didn't have to have too big of a border out here. So each, you know, I made them a little bit wider. Now, I'll show you something else. Mark didn't like this part. But when I quilt it, I don't think you'll notice it. See what I had to do? The only one thing that suffered were these pieces, white pieces here. Now there were that much too short. And I just pieced them. I said, I'm not wasting that white fabric. So when it comes time to quilt them and I do some design here, you are not going to know. But for me, I'm not saying you have to do this, but for me, it's fun. I, I like beating the system. So, all right, let me get some pins, ladies, and I'll put this up. All right. Hold on. Anyway. I'm not going to be able to finish this right away either because I've got a lot coming up. Whoops. Got a lot coming up. All right, and I'll scoot this back so you can see it. Anyway, what do you think? Do you think you might like it? I think it's very distinctive, very different. And let me grab this fabric because I want to show you. All right, so I ordered this fabric without knowing exactly what, um, oh, thank you, sweetie. So, and it's just a little, you know, it's something different. Whoops, I'm trying to get this down to see the quilt better. Okay, here we go. All right, so I have more of these to fill in. I have more of these to fill in the little, like that part right there. And uh, more of these to fill in. Because when you put something on point, you have to fill in around it to make a rectangle. Okay? So, I like the dark. I like the black. I like that it's in the middle. Oh, that's so sweet, Maureen. Aren't we a wonderful group? 
So what I'm going to plant are where this has blue, I will put these, these in. And I think I have just enough of this left over to make sure I have all of these that I need. So see how they're in triangle shape? Whoops. Whoops. Triangle shape to fill in. And then, hold on. Sorry, drop something. Got to pick it up. Can't lose any of it. I still have some of these flowers cut out. And they've got steam a seam on them that I may use someplace. And then w where you see the dark green inner border here, I'm going to use the same inner border that I did around the mandala. Okay. I still have lots of stripes that I may end up using for the binding. I'm not sure. But then... So I'm going to put the black background fabric where the blue is, use a green border here, and then for the outer border, that's where I'm going to use this. So what do you think? The fabric line, I can give you, thank you, good question, because it is absolutely gorgeous. When I saw it, I knew, and then I felt so lucky I had a gift certificate to use for it. Pros. P-R-O-S-E by Maywood Studio. And I got mine from, oh, poo. What is Pineapple Fabrics' sister company? Um, Pros by Maywood Studio, exactly. And I got mine from, I've seen it in Bear Creek, Creek quilting, and I got mine from Keepsake. Yes, thank you, Sonia. Keepsake quilting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I, I just thought it's exquisite. And I think this will be a lovely way to finish up around the edge. And I'll decide what to do for the binding. But I, I think it's a keeper. And I love that the white and peach fabric will really show up some uh, machine quilting. So. Uh, <laughs> Jason's a sweetheart. My goodness. Yes. Keep those men who encourage the things we love. Aren't they wonderful? So, and I think I've told you before that to make the mandala, it was Nanette's quilts. She's a quilter from California. And you can get her um, pattern online. And it made it very easy. She comes with a circle template for the center. And she has some gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous quilts. And she shows you how to cut the wedges so that you get that, that design. It's a lot easier than you would think. Oh, what a good idea for a pillow, too. So, anyway, Nanette's quilts. And this one is the Mandala Christmas version. The reason it's called a Christmas version is because it, you can make it out of Christmas fabric like a wreath. So, all right. I think I've showed you that. And, sadly, I'm not going to have a lot of time to work on it for a couple of weeks. Because... I'm supposed to, coming up soon, go to the spring version of the retreat like I put on, except another woman runs it for our spring version. And um, I was going to go only, I was only, I'm only going to be able to go to a day or two. Because then from there, I leave to go see my Russell and celebrate his one year birthday. Can you believe it has been a year already? So, okay, I'm going to get ready and show you photos that people have sent in. Got some really good ones. And then we will talk about this week's brand new project on our 
um, landscape art quilt Thursdays. We're doing an undersea quilt and I'm getting so excited. And don't forget, I have told you that I would happily send you some little fishes. Oh, in fact, I know what it's going to tell. Diane 57. Um, yes, we're, we're so excited. Uh, the whole group of us. Thank you to Kathleen who came up with the idea and it was a hit. And, but I found patterns and things like this, all kinds of free sources. And I put a whole file of them on our group at the Our Time to Quilt at Groups IO. This is a great time if you'd like to participate with us to send me an email at Our Time to Quilt at TWC.com. And I will send you an invitation. We have a wonderful group of over 40 members. It's a busy group. A lot of talking, chatting, a lot of being there for each other, asking questions, sharing free patterns. You can sh put all the photos you want on it. Have your own photo folder and show us what you're working on or your family or anything like that. And so we would love to have you join that. It's been a really wonderful resource for us. So I put a whole file there. And it's, it, it's a, the file name is like Undersea Patterns and Photos. And anything I can share. Um, and feel free, y'all can put your own files in there too. If you found some good patterns. And that way, if it helps you make the decision to go ahead and try the quilt then we, that's what it's for. So now, let me pull up the photos and show you what people have been doing. We've had some really, really good, good, good um, contributions this week. Now let me go turn off the light. All right, and I will be finishing up the cleaning video um, probably tomorrow or by Tuesday and have that for you because it's helpful. It's helped me do this cleaning because it made me think of what I wanted to share with you that makes it easy. So does that make sense? <laughs> Having, ha, doing, knowing I'm teaching you has helped me get it done. And I think another full day down here and I'll be able to get it finished. That's what I'm hoping. So is that my blossom? That's my Grammy. That's my Grammy boy. You're a good boy. But he's such a sweetheart. Okay, why don't you go tell Daddy if you do you need to go outside? He said, you got up, Mama. I thought you were done. So anyway, okay, let me pull these photos up, okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Very carefully moving the camera. One day I'm going to get a really nice camera. I mean, this has been a doll baby camera. I can't complain. But it was very inexpensive. And one day I'll get a nice one. Because after two years and still loving it so much, I think that this is going to be a good future for me. And what in the world would I do without y'all? Okay. Here we go. I want to show you bees again because, oh my goodness gracious, her work is so amazing. And look at this wonderful landscape. And this is her first one ever. And she's, it's still in progress. I love it. And this is a yarrow or Queen Anne's lace fat, a flower. And I love all of her thread sketching and stitching and to make it look like a nice meadow. And then notice how that she changes fabric styles, textures, and all to show a, the change in elevation, the distance. So this woman is very talented. Okay, let me see. Now let me go to her next one. And this one, I mean, oh my gosh, this one gets me so, so excited. 
this is an embroidery work. And look at, she used Tyvek and a heat gun or something like that for the rocks. The pebbles she made out of an air dry clay. And then she took something to make like a uh, crab pot or lobster pot. And onion bag netting for a fish net. Look at the stitching that she did to be the seaweed. And some kind of stitching or lace to be the waves coming in. I mean, this is such talent. I am in awe. Way to go, Miss B. So she has, oh, and a stitching for her fencing. She has such talent, and I can't wait to see more of her work. Talented, talented lady. Okay, Miss Bonnie. Now, she's been a busy lady this week, and I love the photos she shares with us. Here is a water retention pond with some geese ready for spring. Isn't that pretty? Thank you, Bonnie, for sharing these with us. Let's see. Then she went to, I think it was a Hobby Lobby trip. And she found this storage box, and see the hexagons printed on it? The perfect thing is, guess what she's going to keep in it? Hexagons. <laughs> she said she'll never forget what's in it. And it shows, it looks like snow's melting, maybe spring's almost getting there. But I love these photos. Okay, let me see. Then there is a cross-stitching she's working on. I, I admire you guys, your eyes, your vision doing that. Wow. Here is another photo with a bunch more geese. They know what time it is. It's time to get to a warmer climate and then hunker down to... I have new baby geese. Here is a beautiful cross stitch embroidery she's working on. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay. Let me, last one. This is the outside of her hexagon box. So, good choice. You'll never forget where your hexagon supplies are. Excellent. Okay. Now, let's see who else we have. So, we like showing. Oh, Miss Aka sent this to me. I want to go find this. It's at the Miami or something airport. Look at this. Um, it has a ripply water-looking effect ceiling panel up here. And so it's as if the flamingo, his legs are in the water, and see the way that the light shines down? And then this big, his big head and neck comes down from the water. So as you're walking through the airport, it's like you're under the water. Is that, I mean, this couldn't be more cool. I, I can't imagine. I want to go see that. <laughs> That is amazing. So thank you, Miss Akko. You don't know how much pleasure I have gotten from that. That is, I mean, that is a great mind that thinks of that. How cool. I would love that experience. Boy, how amazing. Okay. Diana Wright has been such a busy lady. Here is... The latest um, Quilt of Valor that she made this past week. And, you know, she's so smart. She saves extra parts from different quilts, keeps them in a pile waiting for the next, whoops, the next Quilt of Valor. Isn't that great? And she heard of a dear veteran who's having his um, a serious health problem, and she wanted to give him something to comfort him. Then she was down 
and closing up her in-law's Florida house because Marty lost his father recently. And so that was a bittersweet time. How wonderful that they went to help. Then she finished this mammoth tree of life quilt. Let me see if I can make it larger. Tree of life is an amazing process because you have to make a gazillion half square triangles. And yes, gazillion is the qu proper quilting term for making that many half square triangles. Just beautiful. That was a big quilt. And here again is the Quilt of Valor has Constitution United States panel. Lovely. Okay. Here is another view from her in-law's Florida house on the water. So peaceful and beautiful. Wow. It looks very different to her because Texas doesn't have that kind of overwhelming green canopy. Mark always says the sky's too small here. He misses the big sky of Texas. Another shot of, and then, oh, this is what I was going to show you. See how she had all these parts? Although I'm, maybe she made all of those from the fabric soon as she heard. But I thought that was smart. Another shot. This is, I mean, that could be a beautiful landscape quilt right there. What a beautiful view. Way to go. And then her elephant quilt. Isn't that sweet? I love that thing. And the vet who received his quilt. Thank you, Miss Diana. Okay. And I showed you Jody's. This is Jody's finish of the hummingbird quilt. I think this is so brilliant. I love it. Great. Wicked sense of humor. I love it. Then she's already started on her undersea challenge. Look at this. Look at these. And um, she felt that the white was too pale. She's going to look for some more teal fabric or the teal was too pale. But she's going to give them their right ocean home very soon. But way to go, Miss Jody. All right. Let's see now. We have Kim. I don't know if I showed these. So I wanted to show these are done by Miss Kim Burris. And I think. Sadly, I think she had to go with company, but um, I'm trying to remember. I've seen this pattern recently, and I think it's called something like, you know, to mean stack them without them falling. Cute pattern. Then look at this. She did a mandala, and these are all pieced, or Dresden, and these are all pieced um, little arcs. Beautiful. And then I love her string quilt. Beautiful, beautiful. String quilts are fun. They look so complicated, but they really are easy. Well, reasonably easy. <laughs> All right. Now let's see what else we have. Maureen had some funnies. You won't probably be able to read all of these because um, there's a, a lot. But this is just to be a good guest, and this is a cute one. Uh, maybe I'll have to, they might already be on our site. I thought this was cute. The quilt wrought with so much love. Each tiny stitch you see will be there when I'm gone to remind you of me. I, I think that's sweet. That's what a quilt is, isn't it? We leave our, our mark on the world. This is, that's worth a good couple chuckles. And boy, ladies, we know these are these are right. This is they are telling a truth. <laughs> and some fabric that she's going to start with her undersea. 
All right. But we love Maureen's funny things. Miss Nadine, here are some finishing photos of her her most recent quilt, just gorgeous. Isn't that wonderful? And she considers herself a new quilter. She's the most talented new quilter I've ever seen. Isn't that beautiful? Her binding looks lovely. Way to go, Miss Nadine. Miss Nadine's sleeping now, but at least when she watches this later, she'll know how much we value her beautiful work. Beautiful, beautiful. Her fabric choice is amazing. In fact, you know, she she reminds me of traditional fabric lover. Um, let me see. I think I showed all of these last week, but if you want a good laugh, evidently she found a wonderful, cute little clothing rack style um sewing, I don't know what you would call it, sewing figure, and I love the way she grabbed some tool and dressed her. Cute, 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 Miss Pat. All right, now let me see. Um, if you want, I mean, look, if you want to see something realistic and beautiful, look at this. And I think it's, is it like a little wren or a house finch? It's absolutely beautiful. And that's Miss Sonia's hand embroidery. Absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, it's different than any, you know, I didn't make it because it's not all crunched up. It doesn't have handprints and spills and stains on it. And it, you can actually tell what it is. <laughs> so Miss Sonia, everything she does is magic. That's beautiful, hon. Way to go. Okay. I think that does it for this week's photos. And ouch. don't forget, join our group or send me at my email, send me photos of what you're working on and we will show it. We will. Because we love it. We get inspired, excited, by looking at your work. So don't forget that this Thursday is going to be the beginning of our undersea adventure. So I always say start looking up um, photos, get a folder on your computer and put these photos of things in your computer and um, I'm going to have just all kinds of things I can share with you. If you show me that you're really seriously working on an undersea quilt, I can share Angelina fibers, some uh, fabric cutouts of fish. I'll have all of my beach and underwater fabrics to show you what I've collected. So... You know what? I would love to, Bonnie, I would love to see your bobbins wound because you know what? That's as valuable a work as any. In fact, more because you're preserving all of your flosses without getting lost in history. If, you, if I were to walk you over to my so-called Ada and floss box, not one of them is wound. And they get tangly and kind of messy. So good for you. That you Next time... You put a picture on the site, and I'll show it. So I love it. I love it. I wanted to tell you something real quick, some little advice on a landscape quilt or an undersea quilt. When you become an art quilter, when you become a landscape quilter, please remember you don't need volumes of fabric. Traditional quilting, you always need to think, oh, I need a couple yards of this and a couple. In fact, I got a newsletter from Miss... Um, Jenny Byer, she said ever since she started de des designing fabrics, which I think went back to 1981, she saved, had the manufacturer, RJ, um, R Fabric, send her three yards of every fabric that she designed, background fabric or whatever, and seven yards of each border. And she has saved all of it for... Uh, 39 years. 
And she said the attic started sagging. So she's decided she has to give it up. And so be looking on her site. If you stop by her studio, she's going to start packaging some of it into special uh, groupings so that fans, longtime fans of Miss Jenny can have some of it. So anyway, um, but be looking for that. And she'll put some of it on online for or send it in her weekly little newsletter. But um, going back to landscape quilting, remember that when you if you switch from traditional quilting to landscape quilting, you only buy in fat quarters. And what you do want to have is muslin and a decent quality muslin. Buy a bolt of it, it and that way you'll always have because you I, I always almost always start with a layer of muslin that I build on. It's my foundation fabric. But so far as fabrics, it's not expensive because you buy in fat quarters, fat eights, and you'll get a hang for which fabrics to buy a little bit more of. But for the most part, it's having a variety, but not having to have that much of any one fabric. So because it's the variety that makes the work so much more interesting. So I just thought I'd give you that little hint. And when you go to quilt shows and stuff, you'll see landscape fabrics um, done up in little folded fat quarters. And that's what you want. So don't let it worry you. And uh, yes, I. in fact, I'm not smelling the... Uh, we put the turkey, the gravy, and the chicken broth in a crock pot. And I'm not smelling it yet. Um, and then we're going to, oh, I don't know if y'all do this. Here, here I am going off on a different subject. But Mark and I like to bake our baked potato, our, our potatoes. And in the toaster oven or the real oven, depending. Because I don't like, with my arthritis, I don't peel and cut them up anymore. We just, we wash the skins real good. We bake them. Then we get them out of the toaster oven or whatever. We take a spoon and scoop everything out of them. Sometimes we leave the skins in the mashed potatoes, but sometimes we don't want them in there. But we just scoop all the potatoes out into a bowl and add warmed milk and warmed melted butter and a little salt, and off you go. And it's so much easier. We call them smashed potatoes, I guess. But... Um, I don't know about some of you ladies, but with this arthritis, I am not going to sit there and peel potatoes and cut them into little dices. And I feel like that by baking them and not diluting them with water is we're maintaining the vitamins and stuff better anyway. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. All right, ladies, I love twice baked potatoes. Oh my goodness, I love them. So that's how we're we're gonna have the mashed potatoes with the turkey and gravy, and that's how we're making them. I told them plan on putting at least eight potatoes in that toaster oven. So I want myself some good, good mashed potatoes. All right, everybody, take good care of yourself. The um the virus is spreading. It's kind of doubling almost every day, but remember to just watch a competent news station. Go to like a competent news choice. Um, I get a daily digest from the Washington Post that I know I can trust, and I want the science opinion, not the political or whatever. I want science opinion. And you know what? Just wash your hands. That's the most important thing you can do. Do not go online and pay exorbitant prices for hand sanitizer. And don't believe these recipes that tell you to make the hand sanitizer. One of them says use vodka. Vodka is 40% alcohol. You need a minimum of 60% alcohol to kill germs. So don't be taken in. Don't believe anything online unless it comes from a well-qualified news source like the New York Times or the Washington Post or the National Institute of Health or something like that, okay? Or, um, you know, the, the, the WebMD, it's something, don't believe any of this new stuff. Um, 
Some people are out there selling hocus pocus snake oil. Don't be taken in by that. And um, so just know that eat well, sleep, rest well so that you're in the best shape you can be. Um, and just watch where spreads are. And if there's a spread near your city, just don't go to places where there's a lot of people. Remember, it can't just come through the air. It has to be touched by your hands and then you put your hands on your face. So remember that. Keep your hands washed. Try not to touch your face, but you're going to be okay, hon. Don't worry. We're working on it. And um, just watch and listen. So, all right, guys, you're wonderful. Thank you for joining us. Have a great, great. Oh, was there a Mark sighting? Darn it, I missed it. But have a great, great week. I will be here Thursday. I will be here next Sunday. And then we'll just see from there, depending on my travels. I'm not going anywhere until I know the latest, uh, latest best news. And um, science is going to get us out of this. So be a good supporter of the sciences. All right. Y'all are the best. I just think so much of you. Thank you for all my new people. Y'all are the best. Have a good week. And please... Take good care of yourself. Do something special. I'm up for going to see a movie this week. Maybe you will be too. Maybe you'll just sit on the couch and read a good book. Do, do something that makes you happy. Can't take care of anybody else unless you've taken care of yourself. All right. Take good care. Thank you, everybody. You are the best. Thank you for being here. Have a good one. Bye-bye, ladies. You're the best. Bye-bye.